She's completely broken down. In this episode of Bondi Vet, a mission to rescue maltreated dogs from South Korea leaves Scott shocked. How cute he is. Audrey comes up with a high-tech solution to make life more comfortable for Ash, the bushfire victim. You have to be resourceful <laughs> when you're doing sanctuary work. You just seems like pale, heart rate's drop. And Alex battles to save Snickers, paralyzed by a deadly parasite. Today I'm on my way to North London to do something that's really important to me. The rescue charity All Dogs Matter have asked me to come and visit their kennels to check out some new arrivals. Waiting at All Dogs Matter is Ira, who founded the rescue charity. Hey Ira, how are you? Good to see you. Yeah, you too. Big day. Like jump suit. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm kitted out, ready to go for a, a very big day. I yeah, hope our yeah, Korean yeah. dogs have travelled well to the UK. Yeah, it was very exciting, just waiting for them to arrive. Kennels have been especially prepared for 12 very special rescue cases that are arriving all the way from South Korea. So the dogs arriving today have been rescued from a meat farm. They are dogs that are either bred for their meat or they're often stolen or they're ex-pets that have been picked up. They're kept on these farms, fattened up, and then once a year there's the Yulin meat festivals when these dogs are basically tortured and killed and it's horrendous. They're like death camps, really. The Korean government and lots of, you know, young Koreans are obviously anti this now. They're working at closing most of these farms down and rescuing and taking out most of these dogs. Dogs are complex, emotional, sentient beings, so they understand what's going on around them. So the thought that these poor animals live a life where they're unloved and when it comes to their final moments, they see what's going to happen to them. You just can't bear thinking about it. It's awful. These will be the first Korean meat trade dogs to arrive in the UK after being rescued by the charity Humane Society International. So we're looking quite shy, a little bit traumatised. Hello. London-based All Dogs Matter has been entrusted with finding them new homes. To be able to make just even the slightest bit of difference and have a connection that makes them think, you know what, maybe people aren't horrendous, which they must think right now. Hello, buddy. Welcome to Britain. And I hope that these dogs might finally see a good side to people. It's just awful to think this is the first time he's been shown true affection, isn't it? Well, absolutely. I mean, the trust that they give, considering how they're treated, is just, well, I think maybe we can learn some lessons from them. Well, let's get you somewhere nice and warm, shall we? We've got a lovely bed set up for you. My job today is to examine them all, make sure that they have survived the journey okay, and then give them their first set of vaccinations. Each dog is taking to its environment differently. While some seem relaxed, others are a lot more fearful. Poor Lulu, she's obviously seen a hell of a lot. She's one of the most nervous. Uh, she's petrified. She won't make any eye contact, won't look at you. She just doesn't want to see anything of the world. I mean, just just wonder what she's seen in her little life up It's to so now. upsetting to see, isn't it? It's really it's more upsetting now I've met them. It's really got to you, hasn't it? Yeah, now I've met them. Yeah. These dogs have had no upbringing, no socialization, no training, no fun, no joy and as a result, they just have nothing to give. She's completely broken down. She's just frozen. Lulu is clearly severely traumatized. What's gonna be the hard part is teaching this beautiful dog to be a dog again. We do need to take a different approach when trying to examine dogs like this because you know that they're from pretty bad beginnings. So a little mocker here is behaving a little bit more like what you'd expect from I a I think so, dog. yeah. A Nervous bit more aggressive and, and a little bit of an aggression, yeah, yeah. So I think we're going to have to be careful here. Getting into the cage with Mocha and Jane, you can see that this dog is just quite fearful, quite nervous, and also a little bit reactive. And it's those dogs you can't read very well, and sometimes they go from fearful to aggressive. All right. 
Not stupid. You know exactly what this is, don't you? I mean, he's acting just like you'd expect a dog from a meat farm to behave. He's like, all people are scum. Yeah. And I don't trust one single one of you. Understandably, that type of rope would have been the kind of thing that would have been put around other dogs that he would have seen back in Korea and would have been dragged out to their deaths. So clearly he's going to be worried about that. Good there we go. Boy. Now we're really sorry about that. Good okay. Boy. We're not trying to do anything mean to you. No, we're not. No, we're not. Okay, so I'm just checking the fact that Mokka is definitely a boy. Okay. He is, but he's got a bit of an issue in that he only has one descended testicle. Okay. So he's a crypt orchid, so the other one, I can't feel it in the inguinal canal, so it means that that testicle is likely in, still in his abdomen, so. Although I've picked up a condition in Mocha that does need surgery, I just don't feel that his emotional state is strong enough for him to leave the supportive environment of the kennels. So I think it's best I leave him here in the caring and loving arms of Jane, but I will be coming back to pick him up soon. Right, so who's next? <laughs> Most of the new arrivals are Jindos, originally bred in South Korea for hunting. So the next patient kennel manager Jane introduces to Scott... Hello, Jack. ..stands out. Hello, Hello mate. Come wow, on. well, that's a very friendly hello, isn't it? Good boy. Should we go in and have a look yeah, at him? Yeah, please. Hi, Jack. Jack is a very sweet little beagle cross. He's really very happy. chilled, very happy, very waggy-tailed dog. He's clearly an ex-pet dog that unfortunately got caught up in the dog meat trade. So I had noticed with his left eye. Yes. I'd like you to have a look at that, please. Yeah, I can see. So he's got a cherry eye, an enlargement of the gland that hides in the third eyelid. It's prolapsed okay. out, becomes more irritated, gets larger, stays out. So it's probably very likely that Jack has had that his whole life and something I can easily fix with a little bit of surgery, can't I? Brilliant. Yeah, but I can see also at the same time he's probably are you an entire male? Yes. <laughs> Sorry to do that straight away. A bit rude, isn't it? Hey. So we need to new to you. We need to sort your eye out. Good boy. And then we can find you a lovely new home. But he is not going to have any. Trouble, I don't think is he? so. I think he'll be straight out. Yeah. Jack's a really happy boy and far less traumatised than some of the others. Brave Good soldier. Lad. Here we go. So brave. So, so I think he's the perfect candidate for me to take back to the practice to give him all the procedures that he needs so he's ready for his forever home. My good brave girl. Before Scott heads back to Richmond with Jack, there's one last rescue dog to look at. Lulu just has no spark in her at all. There's no energy, there's not even any fight. I can hear a heart, now we just need to fill it with some love, don't we? Yes. Okay, good girl. So now I need to vaccinate you, I'm so sorry. It is literally like having a soft toy that you need to vaccinate. She just doesn't react. She is just given up. She just doesn't know what it's like to be a dog, doesn't know what it's like to enjoy life, to be outside, to be loved, to be cared for, to be trained, to be fed. Oh, I just feel like you need to cuddle her for years and years to make up for everything that's uh, been done to her, everything she's seen. Mm, I'm sorry. Mm. It's been an emotional day for everyone. And with all the rescue dogs now vaccinated, Scott is heading back to the practice with Jack for his eye surgery. Jane, I will take this boy and you can look after the rest. That's great, thank you very much. <laughs> Come on, big boy. See you soon. Come on, let's go. You're keen, aren't you? Come on then, let's go. Good boy. Come on, lad, can you come? Come on. Come on. Come meet the team. At the Richmond practice, Scott has arrived with Jack. Come on. Hi, ladies. Hi, yeah. Oh, who's this? <laughs> Not only do we need to neuter Jack in order for him to find his forever home, but also we need to correct something that has a small gland in the third eyelid, which has prolapsed. And what I need to do is to encourage it back behind that third eyelid. And I do that by performing a procedure where I almost make a little sleeping bag for it, tuck it back in, and that inflammation reduces. Right, so I need you to give it a little bit, a little bit of more, okay. tension there. So if you then flap back over, that's it. Okay. Isn't that my friends? Is that? So 
All good. So we can take the sutures out. Yeah. And then that eyelid, once it's cooled down a little bit, that swelling will come down and you'll never know this handsome chap had a cherry eye. This dog was nearly food. And to think that that happens in the world today is just so shocking and horrifying. Hello. Hello, big guy. The fact that he still has love in his heart for people is incredibly humbling and reminds us all just how amazing dogs really are. All the horrible stuff's all done. You can be rehomed. That's right. Yeah. To someone who's going to love you very much. Just what you deserve. It's been just a week since Jack arrived in the UK to hopefully begin a promising new life. Today, Jack has some special visitors. Caroline and her son Alex and Basset Hound Snoopy. The family has been following Jack's story and are interested in adoption. We'd been following it on social media, so we'd seen Jack's story before he arrived in the country. Hello, you're gonna have a younger brother that looks not dissimilar. Lovely. He's so wonderful, aren't you? Although Caroline and Alex are keen to adopt Jack, they need to make sure he gets along with nine-year-old Snoopy. What do you think? Well, no reaction is better than an aggressive one, so I'll take that, that's fine. I really think that Caroline and Alex's family is gonna be a perfect match for our little Jack, but we just want to make sure it's right. Come on, Jack. It's quite Come exciting, on. So they decide to take Jack for a little walk with Snoopy in the green fields of Richmond. Snoopy's always a little bit aloof. He's nine and a half. He's one of these dignified old gents. He's not quite as excited as Jack, but it all seems good. I'm very happy. How's it going? Good. Really good. Yeah. I think. Going very well. They don't want to come back in. I think. I think. Come on, Jack. I think the two big pluses that you give Jack is a, you work from home. Yes. So you are there to be able to give him the long walks that he needs. He's still a young, energetic, exuberant dog. Absolutely. But also, yes. we have also found that he doesn't tend to be upset when he's with the companionship of another dog, and that's exactly what Snoopy's going to offer. So for us, I think we couldn't think of anyone more perfect to take him. So we're well, very excited for you and we're very sad for us. Who have we got here? Um, this is Snickers. So Snickers, um, mum and dad at home, thought he was having trouble breathing and found this large Ooh, tick on him. That's a huge tick, isn't it? Yeah. Snickers has come in to me today because she's showing signs of tick paralysis. Tick paralysis is caused by Ixodes holocyclus, a tick that is unique to this part of the world. These ticks are found on Australian wildlife like kangaroos and echidnas who aren't affected by the paralysis, but it's deadly for our domestic pets, our cats and our dogs. Oh yeah, I can hear his breathing there. Grunting noise. Grunt, yeah. Oh mate, you're really doing it tough. This paralysis affects the muscles of the body, including the breathing muscles. A pet will feel like they're being suffocated. Okay, let's get him on some oxygen. Hopefully this is gonna help him breathe a little bit easier while I just have a listen to his chest. The size of the paralysis tick that's been removed from her, it's huge. A large paralysis tick means it's been on Snickers for some time, probably days. And during that time, it's had the opportunity to inject a lot of poison. Yeah, oh, beautiful girl. Come on, darling. Yeah, that effort. Do you know if she's vomited at all? Oh, Not that I'm aware of. She did have a bit yeah. of a reproductive regurge before. Okay. Um, non non-productive, sorry, regurge before. Very slight as I put her on the scales. Yep. Other than that, I don't think she's had any signs. Okay. Here. The signs of tick paralysis that Snickers is showing is the difficulty breathing, she's got the wobbly back legs, and she's regurgitated, which means she's bringing up fluid, saliva, that she can't swallow. But we need to make sure there's no more ticks there. Let's give her a good check over. Yeah, let's get that collar off her. And then I think we probably get her in some oxygen for a while while I talk to her, fa her family. 
because she's going to need treatment for tick paralysis pretty quickly, but even putting the IV catheter in, I'm worried it's going to really stress her out. Not only is Snickers losing the function of her back legs, she's having trouble taking every breath. So, so oxygen yeah. For a while while you talk to mum and dad. And maybe a little bit of sedation yep. as well. Yeah. Okay. No okay. On. All right, Snickers. Snickers. I'll come back and see you in a second, okay? I'll get you some, on some oxygen. Good girl. Good girl. The first thing I need to do with Snickers is put her in an oxygen cage to help her breathe easier and give her some sedation to help reduce her anxiety. It's critical that we give Snickers time to calm down before we start to administer any more treatment. If Snickers becomes too stressed, she could stop breathing altogether. While Snickers is calming down in the oxygen cage, I'm going to go and talk to her mum, Letitia, who must be so worried. I need to explain to Letitia the effect that tick paralysis is having on Snickers and the treatment, because this treatment has risks of its own. Hi, is that Letitia? Hi, Letitia, it's Dr. Alex Hines here. I'm the vet looking after Snickers today. I just want to let you know that we're, you know, we're taking good care of her, okay? All right, I won't be long. Okay, bye. After speaking to Letitia, she understands that Snickers has got a real battle ahead of her, but she wants to give her every chance to get through this. Okay, that's a good sign. She's actually lying down there now. Hey, beautiful girl. Yeah, so that oxygen is helping her, which is good. She's still got a significant effort with her breathing, but she's lying down. She's looking a little bit more relaxed. This is good. To save her life, Snickers needs tick anti serum or TAS. TAS is the treatment she needs to neutralise the tick poison, but it has risks. One in 10 patients will have a bad reaction to this drug, but TAS is the only medication that has any chance of saving her. To minimise the chance of a reaction, the infusion will run at a slow rate over about an hour. Snickers will be continually monitored during the infusion by a nurse who will not leave her side. Heart rate's good. Yep. No reactions at this stage. No reactions. Colour's still good. Breathing's still stable. Okay. Heart good. rate's stable. Yeah. She looks like she's doing alright off the oxygen as well. Yeah. She's sitting at 98. Yeah. That's great. So. She's actually yeah, one yeah. of these ones who, who responds well to being held. Yeah, yeah. she feels a bit more secure. secure. Yeah. 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 It's about halfway through the infusion time when I get an urgent call to come and check on Snickers. Hey, sweetheart, you're not feeling good? Good girl. Okay. Snickers is having a bad reaction. This is what I was worried about. When a patient has a bad reaction to this drug, their heart rate drops, their gums go pale, and their blood pressure gets very low. And I'm seeing all of these signs in Snickers. Yeah, she's getting really distressed. Yeah, she just... Yeah. Good girl. Okay. Good girl. She's like pale, heart rate's dropped. Snickers was already in trouble. This puts her in even more danger. Four kilos? Yep. Yeah, Yeah. The bad reaction will be making Snickers feel sick and dizzy. It's important that I keep her calm, so I call the team over to help me. Thanks, I'm just holding it steady if you can give that. Done. Yeah. Got it? Yeah. Yeah, she's pale. She's pale. Boy, her tongue is almost white. Yeah. She 
needs it to get an anti-serum to save her life, but the risk is that you know, we're putting a foreign material into her body um, and sometimes they just they just have a reaction to it. So we stop the infusion, uh, we're giving her some medication to treat the reaction uh, and that's atropine and oxygen and, and fluids and we're going to try and get her blood pressure up. But she she needs this anti-serum, you know, otherwise, she, otherwise she's going to die. So we will have to give it you know, slower over a long time frame, potentially give her other drugs to, to try to stop any further reaction. But this is this is a complication and Snickers, she really didn't need this. Snickers is starting to feel better. She's calmed down and she's stable for now. Yeah, I think we just keep monitoring her for the next 30 minutes. And then we make a decision about restarting the anti-serum. It's been an hour since Snickers had the reaction and all her vital signs have returned to normal. The nurses have already become really attached to this little girl and they've tucked her up in a blanket. So we've made the decision to restart the Tigandi serum infusion. Now, we don't know how this is gonna go, but we have to give this a try. So all of the Tigani serum, we managed to get it all in, which was really good. And she's resting nice and quietly now. So, you know, I'm pleased at least we've got that on board for her. But from this point, it's really up to Snickers to try to fight this. And I don't know how she's gonna go, but what I do know is her mum tells me she is a little fighter. So fingers crossed she can, she can fight this. From here, Snickers is going to be transferred into the intensive care unit. Critical patients like Snickers need round-the-clock nursing care to go to the toilet, to be turned regularly, even eye drops because they can't blink properly. Snickers will also need a full body clip because although we haven't found another tick, they can be as tiny as a match head. After everything she's been through, Snickers would not survive another one. It's Tuesday. I haven't seen Snickers since Sunday evening and the team have kept me updated yesterday on how she's doing but it sounds like her recovery has been remarkable so I can't wait to see her. Hey guys! Oh look at you! <laughs> oh dear! I see Snickers and I can't believe my eyes. This is a different dog. Oh my goodness. Now I can't get you too excited. Not too excited because you're still, you're still not quite well. You're jumping around like a lunatic, are you? Hey, we've got to keep you nice and quiet. Hmm? I'm going to keep you nice and quiet. Oh, you are so precious, aren't you? Hey? I can't wait to reunite Snickers with Letitia. All right, time to go home. Let's go. I don't think you've seen your mum just yet, have you? Oh, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> who's that? Oh, baby. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You'll be very happy to go home and see your family. Okay, well, you guys take care. Okay. See you, little girl. Go feed our 
male chameleon. So he's a little veiled chameleon. I've got a few crickets ready to go. So what they do is they fling out that forked tongue. They've got these amazing accelerator muscles on the tongue. On the end of their tongue is a sticky pad, which will grab a hold of the cricket. And then he's gonna eat his food. There he is. He's got one eye on me. So we'll grab out our first little cricket and uh, we'll see if he wants some food. Here we go. Perfect. We'll give him a few more. Really cool. There is a lot of misconceptions about chameleon behaviour, in particular when we're talking about their colour change. So what we've done today is set up a little experiment. We've got a few little habitats for the chameleon to sit in, and what we want to see is whether the chameleon changes colour to match that little habitat. So we'll try him on green first, and then we'll see if he tries to blend in at all. Stick him onto his little bit of driftwood there. So we are already seeing a, a colour change. It, instead of being that really light green blue colour that we saw before, we are noticing a colour change to a much darker, more emerald green, but also too, those white patches that were quite vibrant before, now are covered with a, a brown ring. But I think we still might see some more colour changes as well. And we'll move him across. Now that he's gone into this new habitat, we haven't seen him change colour at all. In fact, he's still very dark. Those brown hues are still hanging around those white spots. His coloration looks more mottled now and he's substantially darker from when we first collected him from his exhibit. So now we're moving into our little red habitat. Let's see if we go any darker or any lighter. We were hoping it was going to go bright red, but that clearly hasn't happened. But I would say between the change from yellow to this new red habitat, he has darkened a little bit. And whether that's related to the habitat or to handling, I guess we'll know after this. From the initial time we first brought him out, even when he's gone inside these little habitats, he hasn't really changed too much. He was light at the start. He's now gone very, very dark in comparison. Veiled chameleons are one of the most beautiful animals on the planet. There's no doubt about it. And the way they change colour is simply incredible. But what we've learned today, that that colour change is much more related to their mood and a way of defence rather than changing their colour to suit any environment. He clearly didn't go bright red, he clearly didn't go bright yellow. Instead, he went from his beautiful relaxed green colour to a much darker, more mottled coloration, which is him signalling to me he's much happier inside his big exhibit. We've got little Ash, how cute he is. So often while we're here in the kangaroo sanctuary, we do see another species and we've got a few wombats at home. So we've got Victor out there and this is little Ash that's been with us for quite a while. He stays in his home with the kangaroos and also with Rosemary at the main house. And he's recovering from mange. So he's taken quite a while to get better and his hair's taking quite a while to grow back. Um, but what we're finding is he often does scratch himself and he gets these open sores um, that we have to prevent um, getting infected. So laser works quite well with that. So just to help with the healing, um, to prevent infection, and then we'll kind of give him some cream as well. But he's a sweetheart. He loves his cuddles and his sleeps and his pouches. <laughs> So wombat mange is very, very common in Australia. A lot of the wild wombats will be affected by it and they generally will get really sick from the secondary infections that evolve from that. All right, Ashy, time for your laser therapy. Oh, <laughs> look at him. So little Ash and the name Ash, because he was actually found in the bushfires in Araluen and they couldn't find his mum anywhere and he was roaming around, he was covered in mange. So Rosemary took him in has been treating his mange and he's recovering quite well apart from these sores that he keeps scratching. Uh, so we're going to give him some laser therapy today while he's sleeping. Uh, just get that to heal a lot quicker, prevent infection and then give him some cream as well. I cannot deal with this cuteness. It's, it's ridiculous. 
So we've been seeing Ash over the last couple of months and you know fixing mange can take quite some time. He still has no hair on most of his head and we actually call him a little bit ugly but a little bit cute. He is the cutest cheeky little boy. What have we got? Head there, one there's one half. on his hand. Somewhere. There's one on his hand here. Having a look at Ash, and yes, he has been naughty. He's opened up some wounds on his head, around his eyes, and on his hands as well, and they look pretty deep. I reckon just leave, leave it on five by five, and we'll just move, move it. bit to bit. Okay. Okay. So we'll pop little goggles on. Doggles. Sorry, Ash. Sorry, Ash. Oh, I know. I know. Okay. It's like I can kind of press it down towards his face. Keep him sleeping. Let, let mommy give you a cuddle first. <laughs> you might go back to sleep. Come right, there we go. So he got a little bit restless on the table. So this guy loves cuddles. So we're just going to give him a little bit of cuddling. And then maybe Reese can cuddle him and I'll do the laser. That's it. A little, little ash. Okay, so maybe we'll go with the hand the first. first. We start him on some laser therapy with Reese. Um, so that's just the class four cold laser therapy. And we find that works really well with healing. Um, it just helps bring blood supply to the area and helps prevent infection. It'll get a little bit hot. So open that up. Okay. Is there one near his nose? Yeah, there is. Reese isn't a good cuddler. Yeah. He's not a good cuddler. At his bottom. Yeah. Good. Good job, Reese. A gentle sway with a butt pat. Good job, Reese. Look at that. Cream on there. Mm -hmm. So that's our antibiotic cream. Hey, gonna rub that all in. Oh, oh you cold. Cold. Oh, you good boy. Oh, good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. It's cold, cold. Oh, isn't it? I know it's so cold. Oh, oh it's cold, baby it's cold. boy. Oh, yeah. oh, I know. That's just someone. Gonna rub it all in, okay? Oh, wow. Could you auntie rub it in? It's gone so much better. Hey, you silly boy today. Thank you, Ash. Thank you. Thank you. She be cold. There's no one in his hand as well. Oh, my baby boy. It's soothing. Hey. Look at this magic touch. It's all in the bum pad. Mm. You want your bomb, your bomb pet. All done. He should be all right to go as long as he doesn't scratch it anymore. No. Oh no, definitely not. Okay, Ash. You know what that means. Look what Auntie Audrey has done for you. When we finished up with Ash, Ash starts scratching at his face again. Um, so we made a little e-collar for him. I just found some cardboard, some bandaging cardboard, and cut a little hole and put that over his head. I know, Chicky. He's not going to be very happy with us. You have to be resourceful <laughs> when you're doing sanctuary work. Okay. Okay, try that. Let's put him on the ground. All right, Ashy, give us your best catwalk. I'm pretty sure the e collar is not going to stay. If anybody knows Wombats, you're lucky if it even stays five minutes. But five minutes is still five minutes of no scratching, so we'll give it a go. If you're a good boy, you don't scratch. Maybe I'll take you out tomorrow. How about that? No oh, he's scratching. Oh, he's I absolutely love Ash. He's so cute. What is there not to love? His little feet, his little nose, and his buck teeth. He really is a favourite of Possum Wood. Um, so I'm really excited to take him for a walk tomorrow if he's good.
So Rosemary's bringing Ash down so we can have a quick look at him to see how all his wounds are healing up and if he's a good boy, we'll go for a walk. <laughs> oh look, it's looking so much better already. You've left them alone. Yep. Well, I'm glad. Yes, he's left them alone last night. Yes, your ear collar lasted five minutes, but at least you've been a good boy. Hey, and how's your little hand? Well, that looks better too. You go for your walk? I'm really happy because it looks like he's left it alone. He hasn't scratched it open. So I've got to keep my promise and take him for a walk today. Go for a walkie. Oh my goodness. Oh, he's so cute. He's really good on his feet walking there next to your mama. <laughs> Enjoying it. He never wanders far, does he? No, no. He's a good boy. I love how they stay so close. They're better than children. <laughs> Such a good boy. Gets a bit older. <laughs> then he becomes cheeky. Yeah. So we're out for a walk with Ash and it's the cutest thing I've ever seen in my whole entire life. I've never taken a baby wombat out for a walk and it's better than taking a dog. He's running around my feet. He's going in between my feet, just like he would do with mum, uh, which is what I found out from Rosemary today. And he's just loving his walk. He's got a big smile on his face. It really is just the cutest thing. I love him! <laughs> you enjoying this walk? So Ash's future looks really bright because he's come a long way with his mange. As long as we get his hair growing back and he stops scratching his skin and he doesn't get any infections, we can probably release him when he's older. Uh, Rosemary again would want to release him when it's a lot warmer, so I look forward to that day. Just keep going, just keep going. Yeah, you're keeping up. <laughs> I really want one now. <laughs> I want one. This is Ember, so he's the first male born after the 2019-2020 bushfires that devastated the population. He is almost seven months. We took him from his mum because she had a laceration in the pouch and I've had him for about a month now and he's doing really, really well, aren't you? Yeah, you are. He's so much bigger. You can see his coat is so much longer and thicker and he's eating a lot of milk and getting me up all through the night still. <laughs> but you're worth it, aren't you, Ember? Okay, so I'm just going to put him inside his pouch because when he was drinking with his mum, he'd be nice and tight inside her pouch. So it makes him feel nice and secure before he has his milk feed. When you take a koala, it's really, really important to know exactly how much they're feeding. So obviously a little syringe will tell you exactly how much he's ingesting each time. Here you go, buddy. Yum. It's nice, isn't it? So he's starting to clamber out now and explore his little heat box which he's in at night and he'll nibble on leaves. I hear him clambering around. It's really, really cute. Have you had enough? Should we go get you some leaves? So he does nibble on leaves and the stems which is kind of like the teething process for koalas. Most people would think that koalas only eat the eucalyptus leaves but they actually love the nuts and the flowers even. I've had Ember for six weeks now. He's doing so well, as you can see. He's eating leaves, he's drinking his bottles, he's coming out of the pouch and exploring his surroundings. I've well and truly fell in love with him. A 
put you back in and you can finish your lunch in your tub. You can finish your leaves in there.